There it is. Right on cue. There's chaff going out. Only full on the stick. Got away from that one. Another one coming. Got away from that one. Going out towards the water. Should be going towards the uh towards the mountains, but oh well. Welcome back to the channel. And this is lesson four of SAM Fundamentals. I will be using the vault for in-depth information and data and quickly going over what BMS has to say about these sites in the tactical reference. If you do not have a copy of the vault, I have a link down below to where it can be downloaded. This document is updated on the Benchmark Sims website where at the moment the most recent update is February 2021. Be sure to create an account and get the latest copy. This video, I will be going over the Shorad or Short Range Air Defense SAMs that you may encounter in BMS. These include the SA-7, the SA-8, the 9, the 13, the 14, the 15, the SA-16, and the SA-19 also known as, as the Tunguska. But for this first lesson, I will only be going over the 4 ending with the SA-13. So be sure to subscribe for the next lesson. Remember, I am not an expert, but these are my experiences that I have had in BMS. None of these maneuvers are set in stone, but it will always depend on the situation. These are just some of the tactics that will give you a better chance of, of surviving various SAM launches. Remember to always do your homework and develop your own strategies and only use this guide to steer you in the right direction. If you have any, tact any other tactics, feel free to share in the comments below. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. See ya. Here we are talking about the Shorad SA-7. It is a handheld infra infrared launcher that goes after aircraft. So SA-7, it doesn't come up in RWR at all. You'll just see a, a launch from the ground. There's no RWR warning. There's nothing because it's an infrared rear aspect only. So it is optical by the man pad on the ground, the man on the ground uh, launching it. It is IR rear aspect. The minimum range of the missiles is 0.2, 50 feet. Typical engagement is 0.5 or 1.5 to 5,000 feet. Maximum range of the missile is 2 nautical miles or 12,000 feet. So if you stay above 12,000 feet, you should be uh, okay about the uh, SA-7s, the uh, man pads. Some of the notes down here uh, created or developed in 1968. Um, to get away from it, maintain high speed 4G turn to put missile on 3-9 line and uh, also flare. And while you flare, uh, with any infrared missile, you should take your, your throttle to idle. Or if you're in burner, get it out of burner at least. Get it out of burner and do some flare. Um, so it's very high, so that's about two or three flares should do, the, should, the, should do the trick. But if you're able to, if you have enough speed, go to completely idle and flare and uh, do about 4G turns and it should get away from you. This is carried on BMPs and ACRVs, which is a uh, assured crew return vehicle, which is basically MTLP or a BMP. So some, um, some personnel carriers can carry these as well on, on the actual top of the vehicle. It is a man pad. ECM burn through range is not uh, ac applicable because it's a uh, infrared. Flare vulnerability is high. It takes lead on the target. The uh, maximum velocity is 1.6, and the radar lock range is NA because it's infrared. Moving on down to the SA8, right underneath it. So here's the SA8. This is a very dangerous shore red. I would not recommend getting uh, launched on by this at all. Um, so it does come up on the RWR, comes up as 8, depending on what uh, package you have, it is an arrow 8 or an 8, but you'll you know that it's an SA-8 because of the, the number on there. So the tracking is a land roll, and it has an EOTS, which is an electrical optical tracking system, and it has the, the minimum range missile is 0 0.8, 80 foot launch, 80 foot track. Typical engagement is within uh, 4 nautical miles, 16,000 feet. So if you stay above 19,000 feet, there's a, there's a good chance that you won't get launched at. But the typical engagement is 16, but to be safe, 19, uh, 17, or 18 is pretty good. 19 is you're more than good. And always be careful with the terrain on the, the elevation. Because if this is at... Um, this is higher than sea level, then obviously your altitude is going to be changed. You have to use your, your uh, radar radar altimeter to get the altitude of AGL, actual ground uh, level. Maximum range of the missiles is 8.5, 50,000 feet. So this is the distance. It's not the, the actual altitude it could go. Um, but if it does launch at you, um, 
trying to get away from it vertically will not will not uh help. It'll just hit you if you go vertically. So I would say not to get hit, not to get launched by this um to begin with because that's it'll still get you if you try to go up. If you're at like 16,000 feet, you're like, oh, let me just climb up to 17,000 feet. It won't get me. It, it'll still get you. So notes developed 1961. How to uh, tactically get away from it. Break turn 8 or 9 Gs plus chaff. Evade close shot with slice turn to get under 80 feet. So I will show this in 3D. Um, it's a little tactic you could do to, to get away from the SA-8. Four nautical mile shot break within 8 seconds. So um, at least if you're four nautical miles within 8 seconds, you have to do something um shot break or turn in left or right or down if you have some space and missile is pretty quick so it's mach 2 so missile would get you in about 11 seconds uh the type is a shore rad telar so telar stands for transporter erector launcher and radar so this means that every uh, vehicle has its own radar usually sa8s they travel in fours so you'll have four SA-8s and four radars. So if you get one, doesn't mean that the SA-8's gone. You have three other ones still. ECM burn through range is 14 nautical miles. Uh, so you could use that to uh, get a little closer on the SA-8. Chaff vulnerability is medium. As you say, if you kind of change your, your velocity in a direction and do some chaff, it should uh, lose you pretty quickly. That depends. But it it, the pursuit is lead. Pulls lead pursuit on the on the uh, target. Maximum velocity, as I said, was 2.0 Mach. Radar lock range is this. The uh, search radar is 24. Fire control is 24, so it uses the same radar basically. Targets is one azimuth 120, elevation 90 degrees. So we'll go over more about this in the game in the 3D because it takes some uh, visualizations to see how to get away from the SA8. Moving on to the SA9, right underneath it. So the SA9 comes up as an O on your RWR, and it does not always have a, a launch warning. Um, actually, I believe it does not have a launch warning because it's infrared. So SA9 comes up as an O because it's optical. That's how I kind of remember it. Uh, optical and infrared. So this is that, and minimum range missiles is 0.3 to 50 feet. Typical engagement is 2 nautical miles, 14 and a half thousand. Maximum range is 3.2, 14.5,000. So if you stay above 15, 16,000 feet, you sh this shouldn't be a factor anymore. You'll still see this on the RWR, even though if you are above its its uh, typical engagement range, it'll still try to lock onto you, but it'll be unable to shoot because you're above its maximum range for the missile. The notes developed 1968, break turn 7 to 8, plus two flares, change plane of turn. So if you're going this way, you might want to just change your plane of turn either left or right and also do two flares. It's in uh, M84 and BMP2 battalions, so watch out for these because it'll, it'll pop up as an O and you'll see a missile. Mold missile per target, and the uh, search radar is a dog ear. So type is a mobile shore ad, so it actually moves. Uh, ECM burn through range is not, is not applicable because it's infrared. Flare vulnerability is very high. Uh, lead pursuit, maximum range of the missile, 1.5. Search radar, 2 miles. Fire control, 2 miles. And we'll actually go up I'm going to go find the dog ear. So this right here is the dog ear. This is what the uh, SA-9 uh, uses for its um, search radar. So it comes up as an O. This is what it looks like here. Uh, radar lock range, 43 nautical miles. It uses it for the SA-9, the SA-13, and the, uh, the anti-aircraft gun. Uh, chaff vulnerability is high. Band system is G. So this is what the SA-9 and SA-13 uses. So moving on to the... SA-13, SA-13 is on top, right here. Comes up as O as well, because it uses the same dog ear. It's a slap shot K infrared. Uses a, a infrared missiles, so it, does, it will not give you a launch warning. And the minimum range of the missile is 0 0.1, 30 feet. Typical engagement is 2 miles, or 12,000 feet. So if you stay above 13,000, you should be okay. Um... But I would keep it probably fifteen thousand because you won't you won't even hear it. It'll just you'll just explode. So I would say at least fifteen thousand feet to stay away from these things. Maximum range of the missile. So once it launches, once the missile actually launches, it'll uh, it'll reach at twenty six thousand if they are able to get a, a, a lock on you. 
So developed 1976, very dangerous optical IR seeker, 13 on the tails and AR on the ALR uh, 67. So uh, on those two radar packages, it comes up as a 13. Um, but on the default RWR, it comes up as an O. It's a mobile shorehead, so it does move. Uh, it might, you might have it in the in 2D on your campaign, but it could be in a different position. ECM burn through range is for nautical miles, which is just for the search radar. Um, fire control, because it's uh, infrared. Um, moving on to the flare vulnerabilities, very low. has an infrared counter countermeasures. So there's probably, there's actually no reason to, to use the flare for this one. Uh, pursuit is lead. Maximum velocity is 6. Radar lock range surface or search radar is uh, 43 nautical miles and fire control is 5. Little about as where the typical engagement is. So now I'm just looking for for uh, launches. You won't hear anything because it's, it's a infrared SAM. And it's a rear aspect. So, oh, there's one right there. Here comes a launch, so I'm going to idle. Shaft flare. Put some flare out, and I dodged it. Yeah, it only has the the uh, smoke for a little bit, then it goes away. Putting back some power. There's the SA-8. If I can come back uh, low and see if I could uh, uh, have it launching me again it's at the end of that runway there. The uh, typical range is very small, but uh, if it hits you, you're, you're done. So you gotta really pay attention of where. Pay attention for smoke trails and stuff. Make sure all your, uh, all the other people in your flight is paying, pay, paying attention to that as well. So if you see a, a missile launch and someone might not be aware of it, make sure you say a uh, launch. Tell them to flare or break in a direction. Another launch, flight idle, flare. flare goes out, and I dodged it. I'm going to try to get away from it while still making sure I'm looking at it. Make sure there's no more launches. The moment you see a, see a missile, you gotta got to act on it. Go through it one more time. When you are attacking an airbase or a a SAM site, you gotta assume that there's uh, man pads on the ground waiting for you. Especially when you're down this low. Why well, it's good to not not go below like 10,000 feet or so. For this uh, SA-7, typical engagement is 5,000, but max range of the missiles is 12. I would say about 10,000 would, would be good. You can kind of see them there. One over there. There's flight idle. Shaft, flare flare Shaft, going out. Flare. And dodged it. I'm going to keep looking over there, make sure there's no more launches. All right, moving on to the SA-8. Here I'm at 11,000 feet. The uh, SA-8 should be on that, yeah, it's on the airfield over there. It's still tracking me, but it's not gonna launch because I'm just outside of its range. 
So I'm going to climb up a little bit more to get above its range so I can show you that it works when it comes to range above the site. Get some speed here. I'm going to climb up to uh, about 16,000 feet. I'll show you that the, the top range. There's that O for the dog ear. Either the SA-9 or the uh, SA-13. See how there's three of them there? Or four of them? It's four uh, SA-8s. And they're, uh, each one has their own radar site. But if you take out one, it's still another three of them. So here I'm at 20,000 feet. I'm going to pass over the airfield. And they won't be able to get me because I'm too high. And long before you're in the area, you should be able to see the, uh, SA-8 down below on your RWR. I'm inside the engagement zone now. Still locking, locking me up, but it's not going to shoot. It might, but it usually doesn't shoot if you're above the, uh, above the threat. I'm passing right over it. Still not, sh still not firing. Gonna just start descending and see when it when it's gonna fire. If you're above an SA-8 and you get shot at, I would recommend jettisoning. I'm not gonna jettison. I'm gonna see if I can get away from it with uh, these bombs. A sixteen thousand. I should start shooting any any moment now. Fifteen thousand, just barely out of its reach. There it is, right on cue. There's chaff going out, Only full on the stick. Got away from that one. Another one coming. Got away from that one. Going out towards the water. Should be going towards the uh towards the mountains, but oh well. Trying to get away from this one. Oh, it got me on that one. So if you're above it, it's not a good place to be if you're above the above the SA8. Get launched on. But the best thing to do is just to go down and gain some speed. If I had a Cat 1 didn't have these bombs, I'd probably get away from it. But here's the if you're down low, which is usually where you'll be, there's a tactic to do. Kind of put it on your, on your, I'll call the bushes. Uh, kind of change your direction of flight by like 40 degrees or so, and do fl chaff right when you do that change. I'll show you that here, right here. Let's see, you're you're on a low approach for a uh, Maverick run or something. So you're in. See the SA-8's there. There's a launch. Full burn. Some, some chaff and it missed you. And it loses you. And you're like, oh snap. You try, try to get away from it. It lost it again. I'm going to continue to flow away from it. Now that I know it's there. I'm going to come back. Do the same thing again. Come back around. That's the dog ear. Make sure I keep your speed up because you want your speed to be able to get you away from the SAM site. Right now I'm going to go kind of this way. If the jammer helps me a little bit here, it does help Flare. me. Oh, no, not Flare. really. There's Flare. chaff coming out. Flare. Jammer off, Flare. and it hit me. I'm just gonna get below the Pull up. get below. Pull up. So it is possible to get away from it. Very hard, but it is possible. I'm gonna move on to the SA9.
SA9, uh, typical engagement is 14,000 and max range is 14,000 as well. Dog ear, look for the zero on the RWR. Actually, here we have the zero. Actually, up. So there's the zero. There's a single dot underneath. Both zeros. There is a single dot, which is uh, a M 1992. A, a gun dish radar or it could be a shelka so it's either one of those two either either way it's bad i'm in the range of the sa9 if i could see it we're not gonna be able to see it right underneath it looking for launches oh there's one i went idle and it missed I did idle and then some some uh, flare and it missed me. Now I'm keeping an eye on that area to make sure it doesn't shoot again. I'm trying to get away from it. Come a little lower this time. Yeah, there's no there's no warning. It just kind of shoots at you. You have to be aware, vigilant of uh what's underneath you. And this, uh, the dog ear doesn't move anywhere because it's a search radar, so it doesn't really go on the inner ring. It's not really a threat, it just knows that there's a dog ear out there. You just have to be vigilant of where, where everything is on the ground. So here, okay, there's a launch right there. Light chat, idle. Flare, chat, flare. That was about four, four uh, chat, uh, flares there. Missed me, went to flight idle. I'm going to continue on. See if it does anything else. Does not. We're gonna come back one more time, then we'll move on to the uh, SA-13. There's a launch, light idle, one, two, three flares, and it's done. Keep my eye on it. I'm gonna make a turn here. Chaff, flare. Preemptively flare because I can't see it anymore. Chaff, flare. Would not recommend this at all because you need to keep an eye on, on that SAM. And that's it for the SA-9. Moving on to the SA-13. So here's the SA-13 and some uh, some Shelkas with the, the A with the single dot. That's Shelkas. So I'm looking. Don't see anything yet. I'm actually in a horrible position. Don't see any launches. Getting lower and lower. Now I'm going to see if I can get away. And come back around. Get a better visual. SA-13. Typical engagement is about 12,000 feet. Come back around this way. See if he can launch on me. There are also some uh, shelkas under, under there as well. I need to be careful of those. don't want to be right on top of it either because you can't see below you. Good luck getting a visual on it too. 
The only time you get a visual is you're being launched at. Still no launches. There's one right there. There's a launch. Flight idle. It still hit me. It's locked onto me now. There's some bullets coming out. So this is very hard to get away from. See, now that I'm in the in the soup of it, it starts shooting at me. This is the SA-13 has uh, uh, infrared counter countermeasures, so the the uh, flares don't really do anything. Uh, you could tell that if it's a SA-13 is that it has a um, shulka in it, has the A with the dot underneath. It's a good indicator that it has a it's a SA-13. Basically, with these you do not want to get within the uh, Thin it at all, or else you'll probably die. There's a launch, or a um. That's that. Let me see if I can dodge it doing this. So it didn't even track on that one. I'm trying to get away from these uh browns. It's gonna keep hitting me. Oh, there was a a missile. Oh, it hit me. So this is uh, very hard to get away from, but to do it uh, doesn't really have a a way of getting away from it because flares don't work. It's very maneuverable and it has shelkas underneath it. The best thing to do is just to stay out of the wes of this uh, 12,000 feet. Kind of stay up high. Can't hurt you if you're up high. Have it launch me one more time and see if I could dodge it. I can uh get a bomb off. There's flares. Oh, it missed me. So I guess that's all. There's one bomb off. One bomb away. Boom. Here's the here's in tack view. Here we are in tack view. For the SA-7, the sh short short range missiles, so SA-7 will be here. So these, as I said, you'll just go to idle and flare, and it should miss you. And here's a few, couple launches here. There's a launch, and it just goes right above me. Doesn't even track. Still keeping an eye on on all of this, just in case they launch again. I come back around. And there should be another launch here. Yep, another launch. Flares out there, and it misses again. Come back around for another pass. There's another missile. Flares out, and it misses. Actually, it does hit one of those missiles, or one of those uh, flares. Yep, hits right on it. Yep, right through the flare. So keep going around, come back, reset. When I go to the SA uh, SA eight, I do a, a high high approach. So I'm up high. I'm at twenty thousand feet right here. So I'm at twenty thousand feet, going over the the SA eight, and I didn't get anything because I'm above its typical uh, launch parameters. And I dive down a little bit, and then I'm actually actually get shot about here as does the first one shoots me about three three point two three point three miles at a sixteen thousand feet so right in that goldilocks zone of the sa8 
and being above it's probably not the best place to be but there are ways to get um to to prolong your your uh, demise in a sense so basically what i did here i split s uh i did my my program for for chaff went this way and it missed me on that i go the other direction and it missed me on that one and this is when i said i should probably uh go in the other 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 direction but i was like oh well so here uh i think i probably did as best as i could i i might have trying to think what what could i have done yeah and this i should have uh continued to go off but i mean that's a it's a hard decision there not really sure what would happen i i could have tried to come back back this way to force the missile to to do a a a larger adjustment so i could have done this basically this maneuver earlier like about right here i should have started turning and going the other direction to kind of make force the missile to 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 make that adjustment but the missile is pulling 9 g's here so i mean i don't think i'll be able to really 11 13 15 so yeah i don't think i'll be able to get away from that it was pulling 15 g's 16 g's to get me but i i don't think anything could have could have really happened uh, in my opinion, I don't think I could have got away from that. So I do some low passes after the high pass. So I come here low. There's a launch right here. I go back, slow it down a little bit. Uh, let's go times five. So I, I get launched at at about four miles. And as I was saying, if you, if you kind of you jink or crank, kind of just crank in, the, in this direction and uh, kind of get away from it with some chump chaff, it should lose you here. And then now I'm pumping because I want to get away from it. And it actually loses me again. I don't think it really tracked. And there, there was that little lip when it comes to the, the uh, terrain right there. So that might have been a contributing factor as well. But it launches again as I'm going away. I'm always keeping an eye on the SA-8. Make sure it doesn't launch at me. There are times where it doesn't give you a launch warning. Or where the missile's still tracking... But it the the radar is not tracking. So here I am, about two three point three miles. I uh, get a launch. I actually didn't even see that till just now. So I get a launch at three and a half miles. Um, I do that same maneuver, and it just didn't work this time. Uh, I might have maybe didn't go far enough, or went too far, or I'm not really sure what what happened. But that's that's my tactic to to do it at a low altitude. It just uh, kept on me that time. That second one went to the ground. So I'm just going to re reset to uh, the next Sam here. This is the, uh, I believe, another, another Sam. Oh, the SA-13, I believe. Yeah, the SA-13. So going after the SA-13... All right here, I'm approaching the SA-9. The uh, has uses the dog ear as its search radar, but it's a majority um, majority IR. Even though it says SA-3 here, it's actually an SA-9. So believe me, this is SA-9. But I do see this this uh, CC here's the SA-9. I see this missile launch off the last second, and I was able to get some some flares off, and it went right through that first flare right there, being that I did idle first and then flared off. It went after the first flare. So I come and reset, always keeping my eyes on the on the uh, SAM site. Come back around uh, 2,500 feet, keeping my eyes on the SAM site. There goes the first or the 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 missile, and it goes after that first flare again. So right through the first flare. Do a little loops or a little barrel roll so I could keep visual on the on the uh, the missile, and it'll have a hard time finding my heat signature. So I come back around. About 1,000 feet now. My speed is a 0.5 Mach. I'm a climbing. There's another another launch right here. About uh, 1.1, yeah, about 1.1, 1.2 miles. There's a launch out. I idle, go to go idle, and then do flares, and it goes right through that that first flare again. Right here. 
I reset for another pass. So I would not recommend this situation right here. Reason being is you're putting your blind spot on the uh, the threat right now. So you, you're unable to see any more, any more launches. So the reason why I did this to get a better angle and to show you what, what's a bad um, idea to do. So I'm turning right here, but in, in the cockpit, I am still looking in this direction. So I can I could uh, make this turn, but still mitigate that uh, that uh, that. Well, m I can mitigate this maneuver by looking in the direction of the Sam, making it less dangerous, so I could see if there's any launches. But and, I, and I'm preemptively flaring, so that kind of makes it a little better than doing it blindly without flaring or looking in that direction. So after the SA-9, I move on to the SA-13, which uses the dog gear as well. Right here, I am at 10,000 feet, just above the, the uh, range. Well, just about at the range, about 12,000 feet for the range. I'm looking for it. That's why I'm going back and forth. I don't know where it is. I'm just looking for, for launches. I'm not sure where the uh, launches are. So I come back around in the bubble. There's a, there's a launch right here. About 2.4 miles, so 2.4 miles I get a launch, and I see it at last second, and uh, it actually hits me. I didn't see it uh, soon enough, and it hit me, and this uh, SA, SA, uh, SA-13 is IR, and it actually has uh, infrared counter countermeasures, so it's really difficult to get away from this one. That's why I got hit on that, that first one there. So here I'm just going to get some bombs on. So I actually got away from this one for some reason. It didn't, it didn't track, but you got the 30 millimeter bullets just wreaking havoc on me. Another IR missile that I didn't even notice because I'm close to the ground, so I didn't want to hit the ground, even though I do have invulnerability on. But wreaking havoc, dodge another missile in accident. The bomb's going off, another missile hit me, got a few of them. But um yeah, the SA SA thirteen or yeah, correction. Yeah, SA thirteen is not what you wanna wanna be around. After that, move on the next SAM, the uh, SA fourteen. See and just uh kinda going down, trying to look for the target here. There's a there's a missile launch right there. Able to get idle and then it goes after that first that first uh, flare right there come back reset another another missile goes out goes after that first flare again so it seems like one fl one or two flares should do four f or five flares doesn't seem like it's necessary I reset come back and then uh go off to the to the uh 